Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching Welcome to Plathville. I think this is the very last episode of me reacting. Let's get to it. To me, when Micah and Mariah gave the children hugs from Ethan and Olivia, the, the thing that I felt was just that it was sad that Ethan and Olivia couldn't be there to do it themselves. Ethan and Olivia wanted to say goodbye to the children. I do wish I could go back and do that moment differently, because that's one of those instances where, you know, I've I probably made a mistake. All right, two thumbs up to that, that the dad is like, I think I made a mistake. I should have just let the kids go, say goodbye to Olivia and Ethan, and I didn't let that happen. Well, why, how did that happen? And it, as I've been saying, as I've been watching this conflict escalate, and maybe I'd think differently if I actually saw at ground level and I heard what happened behind the, the scenes, because you know there's a lot of conversations happening off of camera. But it just seems to me, even if I did learn about that, it seems to me that it's just a, a tragedy of a vicious cycle that began with Kim and Olivia. It started as a, a little bit of a tension, and it just grew and grew and grew, and they started doing stuff to each other that was unfair. Maybe Kim did more of that, who knows? And now we're at a situation where Ethan and Olivia might not see their family for years. And it all could have been solved seemingly. I've worked on families that were way more conflictual and way more problematic than this. And it just seemed like it was a simple fix of getting from the very beginning when I, from season one, I was saying we need Kim and Olivia to have five hour, you know, five one hour meetings, you know, once every few days or once every week or something, Kim and Olivia sit down, just the two of them, and really level with each other and really try to understand each other. I just thought that would have worked, but they never did that. They would meet with other people around and they would never really level with each other. They never really said what they were saying to other people to each other. They were triangulating other people instead of just saying, hey, I didn't like it when you did this. I think I deserve an apology. And then the other person would say, you're right. I'm sorry I did that. Now, I need an apology for that. You know, you repair the relationship. There, I think that was absolutely possible, but they just never did that. And I worried from the beginning. I just thought, they, and Kim would ask for that. She would say like, you know, we need to connect. But she didn't really set up a scenario, particularly early in the game, for that to happen. Once it passes a certain threshold, I think Olivia was just like, Kim is a scary monster to me, and I need to avoid her like the plague. I think at a certain point, Olivia was just like, I, she terrifies me. I am so scared of her. She's so intimidating. She's so mean to people that I just need to run from her as soon as I can. And then Kim didn't really do enough. She's the older one. She should do more to reach out. But it's, yeah, it's just a huge tragedy. It's, it's just really sad to see. You know, we're watching this TV show. It's entertainment, presumably. But this is a real family. This is real life. You know, this isn't like 90 Day Fiance where people are just dating and they can break up and go on with their lives. You know, Big Ed, for example, he's probably doing fine. I don't know. But... He's probably doing fine, but in this family, we're watching real damage happen. Ethan and Olivia seem resolute, and I can't imagine a way of coming back from this, given how bad it got. Maybe time will heal, but it just doesn't look like that's going to happen. Maybe season three, they'll actually hire a family therapist to help them. That would make rational sense, wouldn't it? You know, thinking about it, yeah. What harm would it have been just to say goodbye? If Ethan had approached it differently, if he had come over and said, you know, we've had our disagreements, things are really tough right now, um, you know, but respectfully said, you know, this is what we want to do, I, it might have been different. All right. So it's interesting. She's saying if he was more respectful, things would have been different. So it seems like that's how she operates is, is under respect and obedience. It makes sense when you have all those kids that you'd have to have a pretty uh, robust system of discipline, if you will. But 
to a 22 year old son, especially under that those circumstances, I don't know if that's the paradigm that I would recommend that the mom have. If you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna come to me, you're gonna come to me respectful, and then things will be better. I don't actually think that would have helped anyway, honestly. If, if he was respectfully rejecting them, I don't think that would have helped. What I think would have helped is if the mom would have said something like, Ethan, I'm so sorry I put you in this position. Olivia seems really upset at me, and I must have done a lot of things wrong. And I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong, but just know that I was really trying. And Ethan, I'm my son that I love, I'm so sorry that you're in this position and I don't know what to do and I feel hurt. You know, t tell people your feelings. Be vulnerable. Be real. Uh, don't always try to be like I'm above you and I have authority over you and you will come to me with respect. Or another mode that she has is just closed. Just no one's there. The the, the scrutinizing authority that's quiet from afar. That's, that's how she kind of comes across. I don't think she means to come across that way. I've, I've worked with a lot of parents like her and worse than her, you know, further down that spectrum. And they don't usually, you know, they're not usually aware and they're probably not trying to come across that way. They actually developed that demeanor early in life or was modeled to them or something. And so, trying to loosen people up a little bit, trying to help them to trust that they can be vulnerable and actually it'll lead to good things. There's a very good chance that the mom believes that vulnerability will lead to terrible things like a complete degradation of authority and total chaos in the family. And sometimes that can be true, but a little bit of vulnerability, especially in a moment like that, would have helped. So I disagree with the mom that respect from Ethan was the cure. I think vulnerability was the cure. What's it going to take to fix all this? Between Ethan and Olivia and us? A miracle. Do you believe in miracles? Sure. Yeah, I believe in miracles. Um, no, not a miracle. Family therapy. And family therapy, uh, even though I was talking about it earlier as it was magical, it's not, a mir it's not miraculous. <laughs> it, 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 a miracle implies something that's very rare. Family therapy success happens every day. And so uh, it just boggles my mind. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this again. If you fall off the roof and you break your arm, you don't wander around the house for months going, ow, my arm hurts, I wonder why. I hope a miracle happens and cures my arm. No, you go to the physician because you broke your arm. When you have a problem in your family, particularly when it's conflict related, you call a family therapist. They're trained. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Please, for the love of God. Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Uh, I'm a Mercy, sister. I like to do. I like to eat. Come on, spill my coffee. Oh. Group hug. Move in. Bye. Group hug. Bye. 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 Right here. This is of my family doing a group hug. It's a it's a wonderful feeling. So you have to wonder, is this typical behavior for the mom, or is this a new behavior for the whole system? Is this another sign that the system is more infused with Mariah and Ethan energy, if you will? More spontaneity, more rebellion, more being outside of the box. I don't know. Maybe this is common for the mom. I don't know. It certainly seems unusual given the way that the family is reacting, but you know, it's just an idea. <laughs> You wouldn't have seen me pull a fun prank, you know, in the last year, um, just because of all of the drama going on and how heavy that's been on me. Okay, so the mom just said, you wouldn't see me doing something like this before, but now I'm doing something new. 
Now, according to her, the way that people usually look at themselves is like, well, I decided. Another way to look at this is that the, f the family has gone through morphogenesis. This, the family system has changed. And there's a new set of rules organizing the way that they interact and the way that they meet each other's needs. And because there was so much oppressive energy and so much anti-oppressive energy pushing in both directions, and now that Ethan has completely pushed it so far and now he's gone, that, 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 oppress, that pushback energy is now so strong and so ever-present because it's so everyone's aware Ethan is, is pushing back from afar, so to speak. It frees everyone else to say, okay, now we can kind of balance out a little bit. I hope that makes sense. Been able to kind of set a lot of that aside and just go, you know what? We still have five children at home. We're still gonna enjoy them. <laughs> We're going to wake up every morning and rejoice with whatever the day brings, and we're just going to, you know, have fun. I feel like I'm in a Three Stooges movie! <laughs> and of course, for Lydia, she says, I feel like I'm in a Three Stooges movie. <laughs> That's her, you know, very timely cultural reference that she has. Very cute, very cute. I can't remember the last time I saw my mom laughing this hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe the, the system has changed. There's a pretty good possibility as well that the system has just temporarily changed or the mom has just temporarily changed and things will swing back to the way things were before. But maybe this is a sign to come. We've seen two scenes now where the mom very effectively gave the message to Mariah that she was acceptable and that she was proud of Mariah. And you could see Mariah really soaking that up and really felt good to her. And then she reported later away from the mom that it really did feel good to her and it was a big deal to her. So that's a, that's a huge change in the, how, how the system operates. We, we noticed that also Mariah was also doing her part prior to the mom doing her part. Mariah was also you know, giving messages that she was not really Ethan that she still wanted contact with the family by going over to the family house. So everyone played their part. It's not just the mom. It's easy to look at the mom and say, oh, she's the one that changed. But it's likely that everyone changed to get to where they are now, where there seems to be more lightness and more flexibility. Or things will just go back to the way things were before and the kids one by one as they enter adulthood will will rebel and look back and say, I didn't like the way I was raised, and or Lydia will be crushed under the emotional pressure. As I've been saying for a long time, Lydia is the person in this family I worry about the most. She's the person who it might seem like, well, she really likes the way the parents are parenting, and that can be true, but emotionally, she very much seems to hold the weight of all the emotions. Anything that's happening, she notices and she takes it in, even the younger kids. She's probably in a lot of contact with the younger kids as well. And if and who does Lydia go to when she needs help emotionally? Who supports Lydia? Who takes over when Lydia cannot do any more for this family? That's my worry. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. It was perfect. I, I, I love that I caught everybody by surprise. I have never in 23 years of marriage seen this side of my wife. <laughs> so another testament to how things are different now. The father has just said, in all my 23 years of marriage, I've never seen this side of my wife. That says something. Is it temporary though, or is it permanent? But very likely, that without the Ethan blow up, we wouldn't be in this place. It would still be stuck in the old way that the system operated. Now we're in a new system and hopefully this family can capitalize on the change, on the flexibility, on the fact that they're on another side of the fence and there is literal chaos that's happening. That they can say, okay, we have an opportunity here to build a new system and the parents have a lot of control over that, right? We have the opportunity to really look here. You know, What do we want to do moving forward? Do we want more spontaneity? Do we want more rebellion, thinking outside the box? 
Do we want more love and acceptance given to the children? I hope, so, I hope they say yes to that one. So, interesting. <laughs> I had no idea anything like this would ever come up in my lifetime. I think I need someone to spray me down with a hose now. <laughs> That's why I want me to wear the orange No, it's actually a good dress. tradition. We should do it like every yeah, you said 23 it's a tradition. years. All right. Well, that does it for that journey. Many of you have been asking for months now that I watch this show, and I watched it. And thank you for telling me to watch it. My wife wanted me to watch it, too. <laughs> and it's been interesting. It's been a totally different vibe than other reality TV shows that y'all want me to watch. So it's been interesting in that way. It's been interesting to be able to talk about family systems and parenting and the way people think in families, to observe good moments, to observe roles. We had a lot of opportunity to talk about different family roles that people will adopt uh, that's common in families and how rigid they can become under anxiety, anxiety of losing each other, anxiety of being humiliated, this sort of thing. And interesting. Well, you know, maybe there'll be a season three, maybe there won't be. And, I, you know, I don't read the articles, I don't look at the tweets or anything, and so, you know, hopefully there'll be a season three and I can react to that as well. I'd be curious to see how this family progresses. I guess the main question I'd have, too, is, two questions I have is, how will this family really uh, manifest change over time or will they return to the way things were? Will they change for the better or for the worse? Or will Ethan and Olivia somehow find a way? Well, I guess probably what would need to happen is the mom would have to reach out to Olivia directly in a way that Olivia is okay with and really start from scratch and really build that back up. Will the mom do that? She has proven that she is now thinking outside the box, that she is doing new behaviors. Maybe she is capable of thinking of that and doing that as well. I could imagine that that could work. But I suppose we'll find out. But anyway, if you've been watching this whole time, I, you know, I, I, I always imagine as I'm doing these things, it's like we're all watching this TV show together and I, then I yammer and then you comment below. So, you know, we've really been on a journey together. Um, we've really been on a, on a thing together. <laughs> like we've all been sitting on a couch watching a TV show and all chiming in on, on our thoughts and, and reacting to it. And so it's been, it's been quite a mutual or collective watching of a TV show. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.